Uh, our speaker today, uh, many of us know him from translucent wood, which hangs in the New London Inn and at Four Corners and at some of the best homes in New London. He has since moved from woodwork to drone photography. Now, in times past, we've had many speakers who were <coughs> provocative and present and challenge us with new issues. This will be not that, not that kind of presentation. This will be a serene presentation where you just get to sit back and watch the beauty of our area as recorded by our guests. <coughs> In drone photography, a bird's eye view of where we live and our state. And I'm very pleased to introduce Peter Block. Thank you. Uh, I wonder if I should just, just if I just speak wildly, will that work? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Uh, would it be okay to turn off the overhead lights or if there's a way? <laughs> Thank you. Um, before I start showing you the movies, which will be the predominant part of what I have for you, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself and about the, the drones that I use and and how this came to be. Uh, I've lived here for over 50 years and uh, I've been doing photography since I was a teenager. I used to have a dark room in the garage of my parents' house here. Uh, but what really captured me for most of my life was being a wood turner, as Art said. And that is actually a career that isn't quite over yet, Art. I'm, I'm retiring it from that at the end of this year. Uh, in fact, this year I'm making more lampshades than I have in quite a few years. I'm one last push. Lots of people want them and I'm making as many as I can. I got, I've been interested in drones for probably 10 years since I started to see imagery done with drones, but drones back then were very unreliable, crashed, weren't great cameras. I bought my first drone in 2016. That's when they started making drones that were reliable, were not gonna crash, not fly away. And I became FAA licensed to do it as a business later that year. So it's already six years ago that I've been doing this. Feels like less. A lot of what I do with my drone is photography and videography for myself. But I do, uh, and that's what you'll basically see when I start showing the movies. Can you all hear me okay? Great. Um, don't hesitate, just tell me if you don't. But I also do it as a business. And once I retire from wood turning, I think it'll become more of a business. So I guess I still won't qualify for your group because I'll still not be fully retired. Um, the clients I have, uh, Osmond Sargent Land Trust, I do a lot of work for them, both uh, monitoring photography, which is just lots of straight down photos of all their properties. So they have a, a baseline of what every property looks like, as well as scenic uh, promotional videos. Uh, the most, re and there's others there. Um, the recent job I had uh, last year was being a location scout for the BBC, and that has been fascinating. I don't actually film for them, but because I've been out in the woods so many places, I know about beautiful places that fit with what they're doing. And they just recently announced just last week that the series that I have been a part of will start broadcasting in May on Apple TV Plus. It's called Prehistoric Earth you, with David Attenborough as the, uh, the um, narrator. And it's about dinosaurs. And it's just amazing what they've done. It's the same animators that did uh, uh, Jurassic Park, Lion King, all those really great movies like that. And I'll just basically tell you quickly some things about uh, for people who, who fly drones, whether it's recreationally or professionally. All the rules really come down to this one. Don't bother other people or wildlife or mess around with other aircraft. 
Um, that includes don't fly over 400 feet above the ground. Real airplanes are supposed to fly above 500 feet, so there's a buffer zone there to keep us from intermingling. Uh, keep the drone in sight so you have a good sense of where it is and respect other things. There are lots of no-fly zones, but particularly around airports, cities, it depends, each city is different. Um, and a lot of the rules are just about being responsible with it. Uh, and there are five, this is all controlled by the FAA. The FAA con controls the airspace from one inch above the ground to infinity. So they are completely in charge of what is allowable in the air. There are rules that, uh, like I can't fly, it may come up in a slide here, but I can't fly in national parks or state parks. But if I take off from just outside one of those locations in a place where I can take off, I can fly over them. The, the park controls the ground. So I can't stand there and take off, but the FAA controls the air above there. Um, all drone pilots, this is fairly new, but even if you just go to Best Buy and buy a drone, you should pass the trust test. It's a very easy test. It basically goes over those rules I just mentioned, and it's set up so it's a, you can't fail. You keep trying until you get it right. It's it's quite a simple test, but it is a way of making sure people at least at one point did know those rules. Anything that's done in furtherance of a business, that's the phrase. And so that means even if I was taking a picture for a restaurant and gave it to them or a golf course and just gave them that, that's in furtherance of their business. So to do that, I should have the much higher level part 107 license. And it was a big deal for me. I hadn't taken a test like that since I was in high school getting ready to go to college. So, and I have to renew that every two years. So it's pretty much like me. It is the same kind of licensing structure as being a regular airplane pilot. And uh, all drones should have a registration sticker on them, like a license plate, essentially, so they can be identified if they get lost. Um, this business about the word drone, it gets easily conflated with military drones. It's like if we had one word for vehicles, car, a sedan, and a tank. We have, they're, they're so different, and yet they're glommed together into one word, drone. But regular drones like people like me fly are not dangerous at all. Finger cuts from touching a propeller accidentally might happen. I've never done it. Um, but I have researched this. There's not a single case in the whole world of anyone being killed by a consumer drone. Other than toy drones, if, if you went to even probably Colonial Pharmacy in New London, you could probably buy a little drone for 50 bucks. But anything that's up to like $400 or more, are they have GPS systems in them, obstacle avoidance. If I'm flying my drone and I'm a little unsure about where a wire or branch is, if I let go of the sticks of the control, the drone just stays there. It's like locked in place. It won't move more than about two inches from that spot. So I can take my time to think about it and how am I gonna go around that tree from where I am. Um, privacy concerns are, uh, com I'm commonly asked about that. The, the same rules that apply to invasion of privacy apply to anyone with a drone. Um, they're also not very good for spying on people. That's, everyone thinks they're gonna look in their bathroom windows and why I'd wanna do that, I don't know. But uh, drones have wide angle lenses and they're loud. So they can't really sneak up on you. And I'm not aware of any actual person being successfully charged with spying, peeping, toming with a drone. So it's one of those things that is talked about a lot. People worry about it, but just like whether they're gonna cause fatalities, they're really not being used in real, the real world for spying. Uh, like I mentioned, not allowed in uh, national parks or New Hampshire state parks. I, that's a fairly recent. And unfortunate for those of us who like to take beautiful movies of beautiful places. Um, there are ways to get a license, uh, a permit for a state park, but it's very cumbersome. National parks, even the BBC Natural History Unit, cannot fly in any national park. 
Uh, and drones are recording everything about what they do all the time. I, every flight I've ever taken, I've got like six or 700 hours of flight time now. Every single flight, I have a record of exactly where it flew, how high it was, what the winds were. It's remarkable how much it, how much it uh, records and, and, and that's useful. Uh, so toy drones, they can be fun, but they'll crash into everything. They, they just sort of flutter around like a wild, wild man. There's one giant company in this business of consumer drones, DJI, DJI, and Mavics are their folding models. So by folding, I mean, so this is the drone I fly, but these arms fold in. So when I'm using it to go out in the woods, I have it folded up in a backpack and it's really the size of a water bottle. And they have a several, types that they sell, the, the least expensive one, you get the package. A package means it comes with a couple extra batteries and some other accessories. That's $600. And then the next level up, this is actually a quite a good drone. It takes very good imagery. The one that I fly is around $2,000. It's been discontinued because uh, they have a new model. And I don't have it yet because it's just still buggy. They seem to have more trouble with this particular new model than but I will get that drone when it is sorted out. And there we go. So why don't I launch right into the movies and I think we'll have some time at the end to do questions and answers. But remember if I went, I breezed through a lot of stuff quickly there. Since it's springtime, I put this movie into the show that this is, if you've ever been to Sugar Hill for the uh, Lupin Festival, amazing all the hillsides are just covered with lupins and and this is a pretty good example of the kind of movies i like to make for myself they tend to be fairly oh is the music not can you hear it i wonder if i can make it does that add to it the music is pretty important if you try to watch my movies with no sound on, it, it kind of is disturbingly weird. And I spent a lot of time trying to pick out music. I try not to talk through all this so you can just enjoy it. Washington Range in the background there. So Sugar Hill, if you don't know, is just to the uh, west of Franconia, kind of north of Cannon Mountain. June. And don't necessarily go for the day, the weekend of the festival. It's kind of crazy there, but any time in that time frame. close I'm able to get to things with the drone uh, and I like flying low so it doesn't even appear to be a drone shot it's really more like floating over the ground or in, a, in amongst trees and that's an indication of the level of control I have over the drone while it's flying. Yes I, I use it almost always on autofocus. That seems to work better than trying to. I'm, I'm viewing this while I'm flying. I'm viewing it on the iPad screen, which is small enough. And if it's sunny, it's a little hard to see. So I wouldn't necessarily pick up on out of focus issues if I didn't run it in autofocus. By the way, there's a, a sign up list over there be worth passing it around uh, some of how many of you are on my email list and get my movies in the mail so just a few of you I typically send out one a movie about once a week although this winter I was so focused on wood turning I did almost none let's see what do we do 
So Sunset Hill is on the east side of Mount Sunapee, right next to the Fells. And this was done at sunrise. This involved hiking up there in the pitch black, but it was really worth it. It's so beautiful up on this hill. In videography, this is called a reveal shot, where you sort of drift over something and then suddenly it just opens up. Chalk Pond. We, someone was out mentioning Chalk Pond just a little while ago. And Tim Mount Kearsage, obviously, in the background. my business, Earth Aerial Productions, I thought people would catch on that that sounded a little bit like ethereal. Nope. No, that's a little too subtle, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah. So this is, uh, this is going to be Sawyer Brook Headwaters. And is it David? Yeah. David was, David was um, the chairman of the Conservation Commission in Grantham, I believe. Is that right? So this is a film I made for Osmond Sargent, actually, the land trust. My favorite places to film are wetlands like this, marshes, bogs, anything. And as we go further into this, you'll see some movies I've made using from a kayak, so I, not everything I do is drone videography. But this, this movie is all drone. That's Croydon Ridge, which you see as you drive on Route 89, you'll see as you drive, those of you who are south of here, you'll see it very clearly. So Sawyer Brook Headwaters is really tucked right into the side of that hillside. Wildlife is an interesting thing. Some wildlife is very skittish around drones, and I don't have, I have less than zero interest in disturbing the wildlife. But I find that if I start far enough away from it, from whatever it is, and very gradually approach. I'm watching to see if the animal is disturbed by it. Some animals aren't bothered in the slightest. I do, uh, with John Kiernan, we do an annual duck count on Clark Creek in New London, where there's like 270 uh, mallard ducks that live there in the winter. And I can practically land right on the backs of those ducks. I can be within two feet of them. They don't care at all. Uh, yeah, I, 
uh, I've spent a lot of time talking to people in the Audubon Society and other groups that are, and they think that, you know, if you stand anywhere near them, the ducks go right away. They're used to that kind of a predator, so people, other animals. This is foreign to them, and they don't even have it in their inventory of dangers. Uh, this is a collaboration with my wife, who's a musician, Kathy Rowe. Uh, so this is her music. And I just collected lots of, lots of my sort of peaceful drone shots to put with her music. Slow plane for those of you in London. The great hiking trails there, easy. Sometimes I call my drone an infinite tripod because it can get, you know, when you're taking pictures from the ground, whether it's with a tripod or handheld, you're kind of stuck at that level from here to here. And it's like I could just go up 400 feet with that tripod. This is Grafton Pond, the best kayaking canoeing place there is in the amphitheater, which is just to the north of us here. This is Little Lake Sunapee and the Twin Lake Village Golf Course. Bradford Bog is a really interesting place. It's beautiful, but it's almost, it, you can access it around the edges a little bit. There's one boardwalk and a little tower, but most of the land you can't really get at. And be able to fly over it opens it up visually. So uh, that, that pink flower, that's all Rodera, a type of azalea. This is Grafton Pond. That's actually an example of a, that was shot from a kayak, not from a drone. Back to Bradford Bog. My drone doesn't sound like that. <laughs> so I know this was advertised as being about drones, but I'm doing probably as much, during the summertime, I'm doing as much filming from a kayak. And you can see this apparatus I've, I've built into my kayak. The, um, this whole part here is called a, a stabilizer gimbal. It's actually very similar to the gimbal that keeps the drone still on my, the uh, camera's still on the drone. So even though I'm in the kayak and it's tipping back and forth, the camera stays just totally level while all that's happening. And I use an extra monitor there so I can see things better. This is Campton Bog in just north of Plymouth. 
again, a really extraordinary place to go kayaking and a lot less known than Grafton Pond. If you go to Grafton Pond on a weekend, there can be a lot of people there. Better to go on a weekday morning. That's the Connecticut River, just in Thetford. So this entire movie, this particular movie is done all from a kayak. Grafton Pond, uh, the fall before last, they lowered the water level there by, by 20 feet. And it's a, extraordinary to see Grafton Pond where you, all the old, you know, it's a dammed up. So they filled it up and there's all the old stone walls and cellar walls all kind of appeared out of the water. Passcode, password back in there. <laughs> uh, I caused that. It's okay. Let's see if we can do it. Well, okay, yeah, let's do that. So how long do you think you were willing to edit? Oh, editing is really interesting. I hate editing. Um, so I don't do anything. Four or five from. I just think I've I've done some videography for selected government and for woodworking. But I really worked hard at getting good at it. Now I love it. Because once you get good, unlike so many other skills, you just get good enough to it. I don't have to think about it. I can just do it until there's some guy. I assume you had many minutes of film. Oh, yeah. Tell us the floor. Uh, yeah, typically for a three minute movie, I probably got an hour or more of video. 
it depends. Some days it just works out right. But uh, a lot of times I'm redoing it shots before I get it. I use a final touch flow with my programs. We got pretty close to the end. I only had one more movie after this one, so. I'm not sure why we're not progressing. Stay connected. So, I'm going to show you how these gimbals work. By the way, this, this camera is made by Hasselblad. This little cube here is a Hasselblad camera. And so you can see now how you watch that cube, see how stable it is? No matter what the drone does, it stays. Level, smooth out. So when I'm flying in windy conditions, the drone might be doing all sorts of things like it, trying to compensate for the wind. But the camera stays smooth and it really, you don't notice that the effect of the wind to the finished footage, unless it's really messy. And that gimbal I use on the kayak is the same kind of thing, just on a, a bigger version of it. Same company makes that gimbal. How complicated is it to fly with? If we were a lot younger and played video games like the young people did, that would be great. So, out there flying, the controller is attached to me like this, so I can hike in the woods and fly. And everything is controlled by these two sticks. The right stick, if I go forward or back, the drone does exactly that. And left and right, same thing, it'll go sideways. The left stick is up and down, and left and right is rotating. Rotating to the right, rotating to the left. And then there's a, a last the dial here, so it'll tilt the camera. So, um, you know, at the beginning, you just have to get used to what the sticks do. That thing where if I let go of the six and it just stay still, that's wonderful. And it's not, I get, like if I was just beginning to learn how to do this, that was saving me. Because, so, you know, you have to remember what to do. Should I? Probably. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I don't know what happened. So, as long as you're not talking about a drone from like $400 up, they actually.